In this video, I'm getting ahead of, ahead of the flowering season by uh, doing a spotlight on one of my favourite early flowering plants, Bistorta pink pokers. Well, actually, it's Persicaria Bistorta pink pokers. And the reason I wanted to do this video was because if you are looking to buy unusual or different plants to just sort of um, invigorate your borders, reinvigorate your borders, then this one is a great one to consider. So it flowers for about a month between mid-May to mid-June because it keeps throwing up more pokers. And it's one of my favourite uh, late spring, early summer flowering plants. It's such a beautiful plant. It has arching spires of pink fuzz above a low laying clump of thick foliage, which I used to think were weeds and I used to pull them up, believe it or not. It's really happy in part shade. So it's a great plant for those more difficult areas where the sun is blocked by a wall or some other garden obstacle, maybe a shed, a tool shed, planter, whatever. Um, mine is hidden behind a wall of uh, my garage. It also then uh, gets blocked, the sun gets blocked by my roof of my house and then a tree. Um, and so it gets intermittent flashes of sun. Uh, eventually it gets a little bit of longer sun and then again it gets blocked by the hedge. So it does very well in a, an area of the garden that really doesn't get a lot of direct sun sustained. But then again, it's an early flowering plant also. So it's used to those lower temperatures and lower levels of light to bring it to its peak flowering condition. So if you have got one of those difficult corners in your garden, then definitely consider this plant. Once I realized what this plant was and I left it to grow and multiply, I soon realized it wasn't that little. Um, one root can produce a number of upright flowering stems which it can easily thrust up through other lower flowering plants or other sort of mid-range plants. The, the, the stems come up on a long, probably about a metre, um, you know, a foot and a half tall uh, with the fuzzy little uh, flower heads on top of those. They start off lower and then obviously as they grow, they, they grow up through anything, any other foliage around. Because it flowers earlier in the year, it makes a great match for things like later flowering tulips, such as Queen of the Night, and alliums. And that's why I, that's what I have aimed for in this little corner border here, which I planted up last autumn with Queen of the Night tulips, ivory tulips, alliums, and other things that are hopefully going to flower around the same time to give this a really wonderful early summer display. I will link the video to how I did this border um, below in the description. Persicaria bistorta pink pokers can be quite expensive to buy. If you do set your heart on it, buy a smaller plant because it grows really fast. Um, so it will bulk up and spread really quickly. So you really don't need, unless you need a big display like now, um, then you don't need to spend on the bigger plant. It grows very quickly in one season. Um, they are not invasive, however, if I make it sound like that, they are not invasive. Their roots form a neat clump uh, close to the surface, so they're easy to find and they're very manageable. They tend to just stay in their lane, which is absolutely great. Once you have an established clump, you can propagate it really easily. I started dividing mine a couple of years ago and have been gradually moving it around to establish it in other parts of the garden because I just really love it that much. The root grows very close to the surface, so it's really easy to just brush away a little soil and cut out a piece of root uh, like you would a dahlia tuber. But as long as it's, uh, but it's actually easier than a dahlia tuber. I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's easier. Uh, just make sure you have a little bit of root and a little bit of shoot either end of the sort of the the, the solid part. So the root, I don't know if it's honestly if it grows on a root or a tuber. I think it's just a very thick root. And then, of course, on one end, it has the little fine roots that you are more recognisably root. And then at the top, it has, um, you know, the, 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 the shoot, where the shoot will go. Uh, cut a bit of each off with the chunk in between, and then you, you're good to go. You can just then plant it up at the same depth as your existing bistorta and just 
don't forget or you can just plant it straight into the garden but just don't forget where you, you've planted it because if you're anything like me landscaping every five minutes you'll just dig it back up so i've put, put planted some in pots and where i have planted it straight out in the garden as a trial i have marked it up so that i know it's there and i can safely say all seem to be developing new shoots this spring so i'm really happy with that once the bistorta has finished flowering in the early summer you can cut it back for a second flush of flowers however these flowers i have noticed are smaller and they're just less vigorous and just not as good a display as the first show so but they're they're still fine but they're just they're just not as impressive that's my experience of the second flush of flowers anyway but they're still worth having i mean why not i have also collected seed uh, from the seed heads but so far have been unsuccessful propagating them from seed but mainly because it was a little bit of a half-hearted effort so i think i will make more effort to have a go at propagating them from seed not because i especially need to do it that way because it is actually so easy to just propagate it from the root but just out of interest uh, in case anyone is interested in in doing it that way of course it is always cheaper to grow things from seed but honestly you can just buy a very small pot it will grow very quickly so that's really it really that's my video on bistorta persicaria bistorta pink pokers it's a little bit more expensive uh, a plant than you would normally get in your typical DIY sort of uh, offerings and garden centre offerings. Depends, I suppose, on the speciality of your garden centre. But I love it and I think it is worth buying a small pot. Um, it, it, it thrives well in what could be considered more difficult areas of the garden uh, because, it, because it, can, it can take those lower levels of light and you know i just think it's an absolute charm it's one of the first really kind of uh, voluptuous plants that start appearing before you get that high summer sort of very full uh, garden and and so i love it for that i love it love it love it for that and i just really love actually the low growing leaves that cover the soil and then you know that's always really good as well because it gives a habitat for insects and all sorts it would look great in a pot. I mean, it would look, if you have a city garden, don't be put off. This is not just a cottage garden plant. This plant looks amazing against a lot of green foliage. So if you have a city garden and your style is kind of those big green leaves in pots gathered around with figs, very shiny, you know, those kind of fig leaves and ferns, this will look great amongst those in a pot in front of the green just looks amazing i used to grow it up between my edgeworthier but i killed my edgeworthier and it did look utterly spectacular but um yeah so there you go i won't waffle on that's my uh video on persicaria bistorta pink pokers have a think about it if you're shopping for plants and you want something a bit different have a little shop online and see what you think thanks for watching see you again soon bye